Look at verse number 15. Here we find the admonition of, of Paul to his son in the uh, faith, Timothy. And he says this, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Each and every one of us, of us, I don't have to have someone tell me what the word of God says. I don't have to listen to what they might interpret the word of God because I have the right to understand the Word of God, read the Word of God, study the Word of God, and interpret the Word of God as it pertains to Jim Moore. Amen? And that's why it's so important that we take that and not take it lightly. As a priesthood of the believers, each and every one of us are accountable to how we study the Word of God how we interpret the Word of God, how we apply the Word of God to our lives, and how does it affect us in our daily lives for living for Him. So we have that right and that responsibility, and certainly we need to look at it. Take over and turn back again to the book of Acts, if you will. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, look at verse number 11. Now it says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Now listen to this. And search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So what happens is, is when the preacher preaches, yes, you ought to listen. Yes, you ought to take it and understand that maybe he's done some studying and some preparation underneath the uh, direction of the Holy Spirit and God himself, but never take for granted what is said from the pulpit. Search the scriptures to see if those things are true. Amen? There's a lot of deceivableness out there today. When you were here, and that's why I, I, I am not a fan of radio, television preachers. Because a lot of them are very good at saying what they want to say, but they're not always truthful in what they say. And when you listen to those, just don't take it uh, for granted that they're telling you the truth. Because as an individual pr a priest, you are going to be a held accountable for what is uh, applied to your life. So, when you hear something, if a red flag goes up, or even if it doesn't, search the scriptures. Find out, did the preacher tell me the truth? Is he really on track with it all? And certainly, we ought to do that. So, we have an equal standing. That means that I have the right to study the Word of God. I have the right to interpret the Word of God. I have the right to apply that interpretation in my life as God directs me to have what he wants me to have. Then, secondly, because we are individual priests, then each of us must stand before God in our relationship with uh, God in our own life and conduct. In other words, each and every one of us. Now, I'm going to stand before the Lord and give an account of this church and how I administered the church, how I uh, directed the church, and what emphasis we placed upon the church. Amen? I'm going to give an account of that. And as I preach the Word of God, each and every individual is going to hear, and as the Holy Spirit moves upon you, you individually are going to give an account of how you responded to the Holy Spirit. See, I'm not going to necessarily answer for your decision. Am I making sense here? Let's say, Brother Jared, I, I preach on salvation, and Brother Jared said, I can't get down there, I'm sorry. Boy, I'll be glad this virus is over. <laughs> but if, let's say, Brother Jared's not saved, and I'm preaching a salvation message, Holy Spirit convicts him, and he realizes his need of salvation, yet he goes out unsaved, on, uh, still lost, and on his way to hell. Now, I'm going to give an account of the messages that I preach, of the direction and the emphasis that we place upon the ministry. But I'm not going to answer individually for the decision that he made to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You see, each and every one of us are going to answer to God for the decisions that we make. You say, well, preacher, I was in a church one time and they treated me bad. And so I got upset and I left the church and everything else. The pastor of that church is going to answer for possibly doing some misdeeds in the church or whatever the problem was. But you're going to answer for the way you left the church. Am I, is that, you understand? You see, we are going to give an individual account of my decisions as the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And I'm not going to answer for anybody else's decision. As an individual Christian, I'm going to stand before God and give an account of how God spoke to me, how God directed me through the Holy Spirit, and how I responded to that and what my actions were because of that. We understand, folks, listen, being a Christian is a great privilege. But I always say that with great privilege comes great responsibility. And the responsibility is that we are to be in tune. You say, well, preacher, I went to the service, but my mind was on something else and and uh, I was distracted, and I slept through the service, and, and I didn't hear what, what you said. It doesn't matter. I believe this in all my heart. If you can be in the church service and you willingly absent yourself for a, whatever reason, the message that was spoken, you're going to give an account for. The decisions that you could have made in that service is still going to be held accountable as you stand before God. You see, we don't, don't take lightly the fact of, well, I'm just going to quit coming to church, or I'm going to absent myself from church. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm too busy, too tired, or whatever. No, don't do that, because that, that uh, decision is a decision that you're going to answer for. Your conduct, your life, as you stand before God, is an individual uh, conduct that is going to have to be accountable to a holy and righteous God. And so don't take it lightly. I'm glad that, boy, thank the Lord, I'm glad I don't have to answer for Barry. Amen. I'm glad I don't have to give him uh, for the decisions he's made. So we need, and I'm only kidding, Barry, but, uh, but the fact is, is we need to be very careful when you, the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Now, I'm not pushing for you to move at any uh, altar call. That's between you and God. But if the Holy Spirit speaks to you and impresses upon you that you ought to come forward and get alone with him at the altar. By the way, this altar is not just the front of a church. This is the place where we come and literally present ourselves as a living sacrifice, recognizing there's something in my life that is maybe an opposition to God, and I need to die to that thing. I need to get it right so that I can be more like what God wants me to be. And if the Holy Spirit impresses you to do something and you don't do it, that's a decision you're going to answer for when you stand before God. You see, individually, we're going to give an account of our relationship in our life and in our conduct to God. How we lived. How we took this word of God because I have the right now to interpret it as it is written. Now listen, you don't interpret it according to what you would like it to say. Amen? You interpret it as while it was written and what it really states. And then I have to make the decision whether it's going to affect my conduct, affect my attitude, adjust my lifestyle, whatever it is. And then I've got to be a, accountable and I'm accountable to what I know to be truth. Whether you believe it or not, once truth is made known, you can't ever unsee it. Amen? So once truth is there, whether you receive it, believe it, and practice it does not matter. Once it's been exposed to you and revealed to you, you are held accountable to that truth in the eyes of God. So each of us then has to do that and we have to answer for it as we are. Then each believer, each Christian has the right to, of direct access 
to God. I mentioned that already. Take your Bibles and look over back at uh, Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, just a couple of books back. Hebrews chapter 4. My pages are sticking together up here. Hebrews chapter 4, look at verse number 16. And here is that verse I quoted a little bit ago, part of it. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We have this direct access. I don't have to go through a priest to pray for me. I don't have to go through somebody else. It's good to have people praying for you. I want people to pray for me. Amen. But that doesn't mean I cannot pray myself. I can come boldly. And by the way, notice what it says. I don't have to come timidly into the throne of grace. I don't have to come cautiously. It says I can come boldly. I'm a child of God. And I can come into the presence of God as I would my own father, my own human dad, without fear, without trembling, because I'm a part of that family. So I can come boldly before the throne of grace. Notice what it says once again. It says that we may obtain mercy, forgiveness. That is God uh, not giving us what we really deserve. Mercy. And then we can find grace to help. And that word grace means that God withholds from us that which we rightly deserve. And that in a time of need. And so I can come into this throne room of, of God as a priest, as that priest, uh, that high priest on the high holy day would enter in not only to the holy place, but he would enter into the holy of holies to the very presence of God, before that, that uh, Bema seat. He can enter into that place and uh, put on there the, the blood covering for the people of the day. I can enter into that same holy place as a believer. Isn't that an amazing thought? Oh, get it in your minds. Picture it in your mind. You know, don't just pray when you pray. Think about what you're doing when you pray. You are entering into the very throne room of God, the holy of holy place. You're before the God that created all things. And you as that uh, priest, you are bringing the petition that you have in your life plus that of others and giving it to God. Each of us, each of us have that right to do it. And we ought to do it, and we ought to enjoy this privilege of prayer. Amen? Amen? Then each believer has the obligation and the opportunity of performing priestly tasks. Thank, boy, I'm glad I'm not having to go out and kill animals. Amen? And, and uh, sprinkle blood and go through all that those priests had to do. I'm glad that I don't have to do that. Uh, there is, however, a, a level of priestly function that the New Testament calls upon us as priests ourselves to perform. And that involves spiritual sacrifices. Look back at our passage. Well, look over at Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Look at verse 15 and 16. Hebrews 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. We are responsible as priests to offer sacrifice of praise to our God. That's why when you sing the hymns, you, so many people, it bothers me when people say, well, I can't sing, so I'm not going to sing. You ever heard Jared sing? <laughs> Bless the Lord. I believe the angels weep. No, I'm only kidding, Jared. But the fact is, is you know what? I hear him in the hallway singing. And he's not embarrassed. He should be. No, uh, but he's not embarrassed. He's wanting to offer the sacrifice of praise to God. 
And it bothers me when we have a song service and we look out and people aren't singing. They're just standing there. Listen, one of the functions is that I am to praise my God for what he's done. And those hymns that we sing are sacrifices of praise. And we ought to be willing to sing unto him. Amen. We ought to be willing to offer. And by the way, look at verse number 16 there. It says, but to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. And so, yes, uh, sacrifices of praise, worship, and uh, uh, honoring God. That's part of my responsibility as a priest is to bring glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. But it is also to do things that uh, demonstrate who God is in caring and loving for others. And so I am to do good to others. I'm not saved by my good works. It doesn't give me a better standing. There's nothing I can do to make God love me more or love me less. God loves me just the same. But my responsibility is to demonstrate the love of God. And how can I do that? By my works of faith. Trusting God. Demonstrating it. And I'm responsible to do it. Look back at Peter, 1 Peter. Chapter 2. Look at verse number 5. That was our text verse. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. Now why? To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. I'm to offer up spiritual sacrifices. You know the greatest sacrifice we can give is this right here. Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present yourself a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And so the first thing that I can do as a priest, remember those priests when they would, uh, were called into the priesthood, uh, they were anointed, they were cleansed, they were clean, they were uh, literally set apart, amen, for the ministry that God had called them to. Every day they had to go through a washing ceremony and a cleansing so that they would be clean enough uh, physically, but also the, 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 uh, uh, the reference there is looking at their spiritualness so that they could walk in to that place and do service to God. And every day is the one thing we ought to do is to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice unto God. Paul said, I die daily. Every day, Paul, in his own ministry, his own life as a Christian, literally died to himself so that he could be what God wants to be. Offered himself up every day to God and to the ministry that God has called him to. And so each and every one of us is to do the same thing. We have the uh, responsibility uh, as priests to perform priestly tasks. And the greatest task that we can do is to praise God, to raise Him, to honor Him, to worship Him, to uh, humble ourselves before Him as we are to do as a living sacrifice. And then I mentioned earlier, and I will just hit it again, each of us as Christians has the right to interpret Scripture for ourselves. Oh, what a joy it is to know that I have the privilege of looking into this Word of God and I can study it. I can understand it. I can apply it to myself and interpret it to what God would have me to do as God shows me what He wants out of my life for that particular day. May I say to you, it was through the Word of God that God, first of all, got me saved. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Amen. I understood that. Once I was saved, it was through the Word of God that God began to work in my heart to understand that I had a responsibility to give my life over to Him. I was no longer my own. I've been bought with a price, amen? And the whole purpose of my life was to glorify and honor Him every day. And that took that Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, the, the die to self, to be a living sacrifice. It was through the Word of God that I understood that God wanted to call me, use me into full-time ministry. That doesn't mean He's calling everybody. That doesn't mean that every Christian who is an individual priest and starts interpreting the Word of God is going to be called into a full-time service. But there is a purpose that God has for us. 
And the only way that we're going to recognize what that purpose is, is when I get into the Word of God and I begin to study and I begin to apply it to my life and then yield to whatever it is that God has taught me and impressed upon me for that day, for that period of time. And when that happens, then each and every day. The Christian's life's not a, 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 a sprint, it's a marathon. When I got saved, yes, thank God for that. And then the next step was to learn I needed to sacrifice myself and yield to it. The next step was to, to learn that the way that I would do that is to give my life over to him. Whatever purpose he had for my life, that's what I wanted. And then every day after that, God has directed me, directed me, and he is still directing me. And he will direct me daily until either he calls me home or he returns for me. I'm running the race, but it's a slow race, amen. It's that 50-mile marathon that I probably would have to take years to accomplish. We need to realize that God wants to teach us. God wants to use us. We're priests. When you got saved, God made you already a priest. But, and that's a great privilege. But as I already said, that's a great responsibility. I have priestly responsibilities every day that I must fulfill in my own individual life, in the life of my family, in the life of our church. And you have individual responsibilities as well as a priest. Let's never take for granted the privilege that God has given to us. When I was of that other religion, I was told that I could read the Bible, but that I couldn't really understand what the Bible said. It had to be interpreted by someone who was more learned than I. And he would tell me what I needed to know. And so because of that, we didn't read the Bible. Because we couldn't understand it. Why would we read something we couldn't understand? But I'm so glad that now this blessed book, this book, this book of instruction, this book of love letters, this book of, if you want to use the modern day terminology, emails to me personally. It has been the blessing of my life because it has taught me, it has trained me. It instructs me and it guides me every day. And I am so thankful that I, in my own life, have the wonderful privilege that I can read this book for myself and understand it. Don't take that for granted, folks. There were many, many people that are blinded to that fact today. Many people, that's why our scripture assembly is so important because there are people around this world that do not have a copy or even a portion of what this blessed book is. And so we're involved in wanting to do those things so that others can understand that they have, can have that wonderful privilege of being a priest for God himself. And so, tonight, let me ask you something. Are you fulfilling your priestly duties? Are you as excited about being a priest as you ought to be? Are you offering those sacrifices of praise and worship? Presenting yourself as that living sacrifice is the first one that God really wants. By the way, did you know that when you got saved, when you received the Lord Jesus Christ that day, the first thing you had to do is literally present your body to him. You had to die to your own desires, your own direction, your own way of getting what you thought was going to give you eternal bliss. And you had to, to yield over your will, your mind, your trust, your confidence into someone you've never seen. And if you did that and trusted the Lord as your Savior, then you received that wonderful gift of eternal life then why is it so hard that on a daily basis, if I could do that to get saved, why is it so difficult that we don't want to do that 
to get the perfect blessings of God, to have the, the will of God exposed and, and shown to us in our lives as I need to yield over daily to Him and to be what He wants me to be. So are you offering that sacrifice of yourself on a daily basis? Are you studying the Word of God? Not just taking for granted that the preacher's got it, but you're kind of checking on me. You ought to. You ought to make sure that what I teach you is truth and understand. So as an individual priest in the body of priests, what kind of a priest are you? Father, tonight I thank you for this word of God. Thank you for the privilege that we have as Christians today. That individually, we're all equal. No one's better than anyone else. No one's lesser. We're all on equal footing as we stand before you. Thank you for that. Lord, because of that, I don't have to cower down to someone else. I don't have to be intimidated by someone else. We're all equal. And Lord, as we are, we have a great responsibility that we can stand before you as a priest, that we can enter into that holy place. We can bring our very petitions right directly to you. We can understand this book because we have the Holy Spirit in us that will guide us into all truth and lead us as we have an open heart and an open mind. And Lord, we are responsible to offer to you spiritual sacrifices. Lord, the greatest is the one that we can give you, and that's ourselves. And then we're to give you the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifices of doing things that are good for others to demonstrate your love. Lord, help us to look at our lives tonight and to see what kind of a priest am I? Am I fulfilling those priestly uh, responsibilities as I stand before God someday and give an account of the decisions that I have made, what kind of a accounting is that going to be? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed tonight. And I wonder how many of us would say, you know, preacher, I'm so glad that there was a day and a time in my life when by faith and faith alone, I trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm glad tonight to know that I have an eternal life and an eternal home in heaven. And that because of that, I'm also a part of that wonderful priesthood individually and stand as a priest before God. And as a testimony to my salvation, I'd like you to know it. Here's my hand all over the building. I'm saved and know it. God bless you. Thank you. You may put them down. Now, let me ask you that just raised your hand. What kind of a priest are you? Are you one that's pleasing to God, fulfilling the responsibilities of that blessed office? Or is there some area of your life that you're hindering and harming the cause of Christ? Maybe the fact of not presenting your body as a living sacrifice. Maybe I haven't uh, studied the Bible as I should. Maybe tonight I just need to come and offer that sacrifice of praise to God. I just want to get alone at that altar and worship him. I don't know. But preacher, tonight I wonder if you just pray for me. There's an area of my life the Holy Spirit spoke to me about tonight. And I just want to do and be what God would have me to be. Here's my hand. Would you pray for me all over the building? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Many hands. Thank you. God bless you. We put them down. Anyone else before we pray? Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Don't leave me out. God's impressed upon me something. And I want to be the right kind of priest. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. God bless you. Tonight, why don't you just do what God wants? Maybe what we ought to do is just get alone at the altar and just praise him. Praise him. Jesus, our blessed redeemer. Offer him the sacrifice of praise. Father, tonight, would you bless this invitation? Would you use it that you above all else would be uplifted and receive the preeminence? Would you work in the hearts of your people tonight that we would become more like you and less like the world? That we would honor you with our lips and with our life. And Lord, bless us, I pray. Bless this time together now we ask it as we yield it to you. In Jesus' name, 
Heads are bowed, eyes closed. Let's stand to our feet, shall we? We're going to sing a stanza of invitation. And tonight, if you need to come, just get alone with the Lord. The altars are open. This is your time to respond.